I'm going to start this one using the big Ike, uh, a bit of raw sienna, oh, just a bit of water as well, and just work my way. Just down to the bottom of the paper, just giving it some background colour really. And I'm just going to clean the brush and I'm going to go into a bit of a bit of ultramarine, starting on the left hand side there. Blow the brush a bit more, just dip the very tips in just to loosen that paint up, see how it's coming off nice now onto the brush. And then just swish that into the paper. Hit and miss, all those little white areas are just bits of clouds. And then a bit of water there, so I'm just going to pop that in while I've got the blue on the brush. Then I'm going to clean the brush again, take the excess off on the tea towel, then a bit of alizarin crimson, a bit of Payne's grey. Keep twisting it around just to get random shapes really. And that's going to come, come down there, something like that. And I'm just soaking up these pools of water as well while I work my way along. And what I'm going to do is take a tissue and also a bit more texture to the sky, a few white clouds amongst these grey grey ones. Maybe a big dab there, don't you see? A bit of white cloud over in the blue side of the sky as well. So the next thing to do is the, there's like a big hill. Now the furthest one is in the centre somewhere, so I'm going to take a little bit of each of those sky colours, a bit of raw sienna, ultramarine, these are in crimson, Payne's grey, and just sort of leaning towards blue, because blue pushes things right back into the distance. And then about here, uh, about round here. Uh, that's the first one. It's hard to stand out, it might add a little bit of more. Mm, more raw sienna just to help that stand out so it doesn't look like a cloud. That's what it was looking like then. Bit of green, bit of green down there. And then a bit more. You can see once the once the, the hairs start to split and the brush gets a bit dry, just dip the very tips in just to bring the hairs back together. So I'm going a bit of raw sienna, a bit of, a bit of lemon yellow, a touch of ultramarine, and this hill goes up and across. And then just varying the colours as I go along, just to keep it interesting. That's up there, something like that. A bit of raw sienna. more blue. Really dark, is it? Bit of lemon yellow. And then what I'm doing is making sure that the bottom of this is sort of parallel to the bottom of the paper, just to make sure it's not sort of sloping one way or the other, because it just makes it look a bit naff. Straight to the ultramarine, just to really darken it there. And to get back to light, you'll have to clean the brush, take the excess off, and you're sort of back to your light colours then. So they look nice and simple. Let's just fill in some of these white areas with this yellow. See where that cocked up, I'll put the water in there. That water's meant to come up to there. Um, that's all right. I'll, go, I'll clean the brush, get some blue, and the water's now there. It's a nice blue anyway. And then put in water. If you just do it as like a quick sweep, um, you can see how it breaks. It looks like little ripples on the water. I 
absolute Größe von der Then on back, see how all the airs are coming apart. So you just dip the very tip in, and you see how they now all come back together again. Brown, raw sienna, I'm just going over there. I want this little bit, um, it's all a little bit wet. What I'm going to do, give that a quick dry. I could just dry this up on the board, but um, I'll, I'll go with it as it is. Yeah, so that's nice and dark. Got a bit of land there. And then, once I've got that in, I'm just going to clean the box. I want to go back to light. So I want a nice light, grassy colour. So. Lemon yellow, just a quick dab in the raw sienna, and then let's just start popping this in. Just touch the ultramarine there, just and you see, you get the variations then on the uh, paper rather than just one uniform colour. Always nice to get the variations. Um, I mean if you look at the brush you can sort of if I do like that that corner there blue and then that corner there yellow and the middle bit there raw sienna and then just let it mix on the paper. So then you just you just get a bit of everything then rather than just one uniform colour where it looks really boring. This water's come way down too low. So I'm just going to go over it. That needs to be somewhere up there. Bit of raw sienna. Bit of dirt on there. Just look, that's a bit strong. There's a bit of lemon yellow just to calm it down a little bit. Clean the brush. Take the excess off on the tea towel, back into the lemon yellow and back to the light colour. Another quick sweep like that. And what I might do. Let's just put a few. few little hedges and things in the field just to divide the land up a little bit. You know how the farmers divide the land up into their little fields. So just, just a few little dabs there. Maybe that's a hedge that's been split up and you've got another hedge down there. There's another one over there. Trees. Just a few little details in the sort of middle middle area. Just try and keep it interesting. Just using the corner of the brush, just to suggest. Just very, very subtle. Just suggesting a few little trees in the distance, hedgerows and whatnot. That'll do. That's all I'm going to do for that. Now this area where I've left white, this is more sort of, we're coming closer and closer now towards you know, what I'll do. Paper's stretched very, very slight. I haven't used a lot of water, so the paper hasn't stretched much. But just enough to warrant a quick refixing. Now, it's a bit, it's a lot darker, it's a more shadowy area here in this foreground. So I'm, not, I'm giving dark, so I'm going to bother cleaning the blush. 
There's one out down, lemon yellow, bit of ultramarine, bit of Payne's grey, and then what I'm going to do with PS, I'm just going to here we've got some, some trees there. Um, I'm going to have to put it dark to contrast against this middle ground. So if I just put this in really dark. Just using the corner of the brush. Just get some nice random effects out, it just looks like trees. Um, what I might do before I put some more dark in, just put a few little lighter areas just so it looks as if the light's catching it. If I just I like to listen to the birds, I don't know if you can hear them in the background. I'll show them you one day, you've got quite a nice variety of birds in your garden. There are that many different feeders, try and attract as many different species as I can. So that's a bit light, I don't know. I don't know why I've cleaned the brush because I'm giving dark now. I did it by mistake. So let's go into dark now. So I'm giving ultramarine, a bit of lemon yellow, a bit of Payne's grey. And then let's again, just the corner of the brush and I'm just sort of twisting it around. And sometimes it just goes full circle and just twist it all the way around. I prefer that a bit drier because it's not contrasting very well. In fact, let's just dry it. Be done with it. That's it. It doesn't have to be bone dry as long as it's sort of there or thereabouts. It'll go right. It'll go on the paper a lot stronger. Again, blue, yellow, paint's grey. So you see how strong that's doing on there. Really contrasting against the part of the land behind it. Just come on up there. And that works its way around. And that. And what I might do is clean the brush and then put a few lighter colours again in front of that. Take that water off that brush. Let's go a bit of raw oh, sienna. And what you're doing is sort of as you're putting it down, I'm pushing it up against that dark and I'm just sort of catching the colour as well. a bit more dark down there. Careful not to paint over the lighter area you've just done. And maybe a bit darker up there. And lemon yellow, the paint's grey. Just to suggest a few trunks and branches. And, uh, just vary the height and size of them. Maybe a few more down there. Don't get too mad with these. Just as with most things, best left if it's kept subtle. Probably best to do it upright as well, rather than leaning over to one side like I've done. And a few more over there. 
once the paint starts to dry, you won't be able to do this. You won't be able to do it while it's still wet, or while it's too wet. It will just dry straight back in. It's just darken that a bit. Okay, take advantage. Anywhere where you can get a nice bit of contrast, take, always take advantage. And then as the paper starts to dry, it will just go on darker and darker like it's doing there. Oh, this is just ultramarine lemon yellow paints, grey. It's really strong, dark green, very, very dark. Um, I think I don't think there's much more I can do now. I think I'm going to leave it at that. So let's see what it looks like with the uh, with the main sun. This is our painting with the main sun. So if we go in and have a closer look. Not really too sure about that sky to be honest with you. I think I overdid it with the sort of dark cloud. I did uh, and I'd have put a bit more of the blue along here. I think it's too much white and I'd have a bit less cloud. Um, in fact you know what? Let's let's do it, let's let's do it. So um, I've took the mag back off and then what I'm gonna do is just take a sort of damp brush and let's just Let's just erase some of this cloud. So, just rubbing at it with a clean, damp paint brush. Just doing just down to where those hills are, and then let's just pop a bit more. I'm going to do the old lot. Let's just do the whole sky here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a clean damp brush. You see, you can just rub out what you've done. I'm not going to go too close to that tree line there. And then if you want, you can even take a tissue. If you really want to just rub it all out. I'll just sort of start again, go into the raw sienna and then just pop a bit of raw sienna in. And just clean that brush with a bit of ultramarine. Just take that down to the hills, get over there. Um, what has happened? See how all the bits of bits have come off the tissue. We'll sort that out afterwards. Don't worry about that for the time being. A bit more blue. And you can even pop those clouds in, but this time I'm just going to keep it subtle. So all oh, these are in crimson. Payne's grey. Just a few this time. It just didn't. Some of it just don't look right. So I'm just gonna pop in. Just, just, just keeping it subtle. A few more, a little bit up there. Does that look any better? Now let's see what that looks like with the mains on. Or rather, before I put the mains on, let's just get rid of these bits of um, tissue that have come on the paper now. First thing, we have to dry it. In fact, the first thing I'm going to do is pull it. See how that top end is stretched a bit? So I've re wet it. So let's just pull this a bit tight now. Don't try and do it while it's wet, you make a right mess.
and then you can either use, I mean if your hands are clean, knock it off with your hands or just use a clean bit of tissue or even use a, use a clean brush, a clean dry, a bone, it's got to be dry, bone dry brush. Um, and you'll be left with little white flecks in the sky but don't worry about that, just pretend they're birds or something. Or bits of litter flying around in the wind, I don't know. Let's see what that looks like with the mount on. So this is what the revised painting looks like with the mount on. I think the sky looks a little bit better this time. The fire land put in with a mixture of the sky colours and then uh, introducing a bit of lemon yellow just to suggest a bit of grass set on the hillside. There's a quick sweep of blue to suggest this water here. And then these sort of fields. Just a few dabs with a hay brush just to suggest a few like hedgerows separating these fields as they move across. To the foreground, more sort of darker, more sort of shadowy. Yeah, really sort of dark, strongy greens. It was a uh, ultramarine, lemon yellow, and Payne's grey. Just using the colour of the hate brush, and then you're using a fingernail to suggest the tree trunks coming down the hillside. Various heights, different differentiating the heights. Almost the dark. Just try to put a few lights just as a contrast. This is just raw sienna. Sort of create layers as it comes towards us trees down there and again a few more scrapes with the fingernail just to help make them look like trees suggesting the uh, the light catching these tree trunks and just using the corner there you get some nice random effects well I hope you like that thanks for watching any questions please ask keep practicing and I'll see you again soon